And so, Ms. Turner, this question is going to be for you. Um, we are learning that HHS never built security into the website. Um, as a matter of fact, there was a top security expert uh, yesterday on CNNBC uh, that stated, and I quote, putting your information on there is definitely a risk, and he was talking about the website. Um, as a matter of fact, there was a piece on there that actually said, and I paraphrase, that there was no expectation of security of your information. It's since been removed from the website. I don't know that we can be confident now that something has changed since the removal of that. Um, but is it fair to force people to use this website, um, the individual mandate that forces people to buy insurance that maybe they don't want and to expose them to the fear of having their most personal information hacked? Do you I, think I, that's... I think that would be a concern. That that is a, it's a huge issue, and it's yet another deterrent for people to go onto the website. We, I'm not a, a, an IT expert, but I certainly have read a number of them have said that even with this last push, this last row of fixes, that they did nothing to improve the security of the information that people are required to put on this website. This is a huge amount of personal information that people are required to, to, in, to disclose in order to see what subsidies are available to for etc as well as the ultimately credit card information bank account information and if if hackers can so easily get into the system it is yet another deterrent from people uh, enrolling in this coverage I think that needs to be that has to be a priority thank you and and I I would say um, given the many uh, problems that have already been identified um, that this may be another one that would indicate there's a reason for a delay in the individual mandate as there was for uh, an employer uh, delay. Mr. Kreidler, I just want to go to you because you have built a website. Um, and did you, what did you do to ensure that there was security inf information on your website? We had a number of protocols that were required of us. Uh, one, even for receiving the, the federal grant uh, was an obligation to be able to demonstrate uh, that this information would be would be treated confidentially and going forward we had an obligation to make sure that the system operated but you know all websites I mean uh, we've certainly seen it with some of the major websites in this country where there's been compromises that have taken place private websites that uh, have had problems with personal information I, I think it's on, an ongoing obligation and a challenge in the new era of websites and the kind of information that can be accessed is to build in as much security as possible. So you, you say that in order to receive the government grant to build the website, you had to ensure that you would use, um, I would say, probably standards that are accepted within the industry um, to ensure that, uh, such as the end-to-end -end testing. Did you do end-to-end -end testing on your website? We did do testing. I wish we had done more testing, uh, just from the consumer perspective, more than the, the, than the privacy issue. But uh, part of this is, is even though we have our website at the state of Washington level, you have the federal hub that you also interact with, which goes to a lot of the more uh, critical personal information that you're describing, whether it's IRS information uh, for eligibility or whatever. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a complex system, that, and confidentiality is something that uh, we take very seriously. Well, and thank you for that. And I would say, given the fact that the federal government required you to use um, industry standards to ensure that you did end-to-end -end testing and to ensure the folks that are using your website that they could be confident in um, putting that material and that at least you did all you could to protect them, um, that is certainly a disappointment that the, gov the federal level did not follow those same standards um, because we know that they did not do end-to-end -end testing. And so this is a big concern. Um, with the little bit of time that I have left, um, verification, income verification has been uh, something that I have been very concerned about because the two planks of the ACA was that if someone did not have employer-sponsored insurance, they could apply, and when they applied, we would have to verify income to uh, be sure that their income was at a level where they were eligible for these tax credits. Um, we learned yesterday that the Inspector General for the Tax Administration, uh, and I quote, the IRS existing fraud detection system may not be capable of identifying the ACA refund fraud or schemes prior to the issuance of tax return funds. So now we have got another situation that was not set up or being um, followed 
where we don't know how much fraud is going to take place here. So thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Reichard is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you uh, for allowing me to, uh, to be a part of this hearing and, uh, and uh, pose some questions. And